Hey everybody and welcome back to another MRA Security YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to get started with CVE hunting. So probably one of the best ways to go about getting into cybersecurity, specifically web application security, is to find CVEs on web applications. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is using GitHub. I have a GitHub called CVE Disclosures where I go through all my different kinds of CVEs. These are not all of them. I do have more, but they're currently in the process of being verified and validated by either the developer or by MITRE themselves. I do have a few also that are not on here, which are actually on my buddy's Jake's GitHub. So I'll show you that here in just a minute. But in this video, I wanted to go through how to find CVEs and how to submit CVEs so you can boost and build out your resume a little bit more. Common vulnerability disclosures or CVEs are recognized by the entire industry of cybersecurity and people look up to other people who do find these CVEs. And these CVEs are very similar to just a standard report, right? So when you go and you submit a CVE to a developer, you're gonna wanna put the description you're going to want to put the severity score and you're going to want to put the proof of concept as well as any sort of remediation steps that you can give to the person trying to fix this vulnerability, specifically the developer of the GitHub, for instance. And from there, you'll get a MITRE ID or a CVE ID, and then we'll go about submitting the form and publishing it to either GitHub or to a blog or wherever else you want to publish it to. So to get started, head on over to GitHub and we're just going to type in something completely random. So let's just say we're looking for a content management system. So we'll just type in CMS and we'll click on enter. And we can see that there are over 244,000 results, which is excessive. There's, there's a lot. So we're going to choose language as PHP, just because I prefer to test in PHP, that seems to be the most vulnerable option. You can go for Python, Java, any of the languages that you currently think of. But in this example, I'm going to stick to PHP. Downsize the results a little bit to about 36,000 results. And we can downsize it even more by typing in stars. And then we could do a colon. And then as you can see, we could do various kinds of values. And in this case, I'm just going to do anything greater than 500 stars. Anything over 500 stars, I felt people have used over and over and over again, or people are continuously going to be using. And that those are the ones that are almost always maintained. Whereas if you have anything below that, chances are they're not going to be as maintained. Developers won't contact you back, as well as people aren't really going to be using those sort of products. So we see here that we have Craft CMS. So we'll click on that as this example. And we see that they did release something about two weeks ago as an update. And they give just a bunch of instructions and resources of how to get started with Craft CMS. Now, if you do not have a GitHub that has a security.md file, chances are they either have a website that have a security section in place. And if they don't, I would just leave it alone and try to find something that does. Because when you click on this, this is just the security MD of the GitHub. And you can see all the various kinds of things. This is your scoping document. So if you have ever done a penetration test, you should know that a client will send over a scoping document or you'll send over a scoping document to the client and you will agree to terms of how the test is going to go. This is the exact same thing. So in this case, for Craft CMS, they want us to do quality vulnerabilities such as XSS, CSRF, arbitrary code execution, privilege escalation, SQL injection, or session hijacking, and all these other vulnerabilities will not qualify toward either a CVE or a potential bounty. If you look underneath, it looks like they actually do do a bounty, so you can get up to $500. And again, this is not normal for a GitHub. GitHubs are basically maintained by open source developers. They don't really have a ton of funding. So the fact that Craft CMS is doing a bounty is pretty cool. Now, before you get started with CV hunting, you're going to need to set up something called a LAMP server. And the best guide that I found was on DigitalOcean, which is just an Apache, MySQL, and PHP server all through Linux. And all you got to do is download a bunch of modules through the apt or apt. And from there, you can go about starting to spin up your application. So you can read through this guide, set it up on a different machine, or you could set it up on your Kali. 
In my opinion, I would recommend setting up an Ubuntu machine and just doing it from a different machine just so you can have the feel of a real world assessment where you're trying to connect to a different host on the network and then from there trying to do privilege escalation or any sort of vulnerabilities in place. So now the fun part, let's say you found a CVE, what do you do next? Well, you're gonna head on over to the link down in the description below or cveform.miter.org. And this form is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna select report a vulnerability and request CV ID. And from there, you're gonna put in your email address, put in an email address that works that you can get in contact with MITRE. Make sure to also add these two addresses into your safe sender email client, just so that way you don't miss out on the MITRE CV number and any updates that MITRE does have. When it comes to CVE IDs, you will also receive something called a reserved CVE. And what that means is you don't have to publish your CVE right then and there. You can still submit the CVE, but you're not going to actually disclose it until it gets remediated by the developer. Normally, I give developers 90 days to 120 days, depending on the situation. But if I continuously contact them back and they don't respond, I normally give them only 60 days. So it really depends, again, on your situation. If the developer says, hey, you have to give me at least a year, you're going to have to wait a year. That's currently one of the issues that I have with one of my CVEs is I asked the developer, hey, can I go about submitting a CVE? And he said, no, just lay low, and then I'll tell you when I can do it. So I'm not allowed to submit a CVE for that specific finding. So in this form, you can do a total of 10 CVEs per form. If you have more than that, you can always come back and fill out additional IDs. But we're gonna set up a vulnerability type. So let's just assume that we have a cross-site scripting vulnerability. We'll just select cross-site scripting, You'll put in the vendor product, so like let's just say craft CMS version 5.12.4 or whatever the case may be. And from here, you're kind of just going to put the exact same thing in here. It's just there for people to know, right? If they go onto the NIST database, they should be able to see this kind of data. From there, you can say whether or not the vendor has acknowledged the vulnerability. So if you contacted the developer, and they did respond to you and acknowledge that the vulnerability is present and they're going to go fix it, you can select yes here. From there, you can select the vulnerability type, whether it be local, remote, whatever, doesn't really matter. This is mainly just CVSS score stuff. If there's any sort of impact that could be in place, so if you do have a privilege escalation vulnerability like an IDOR, you can come here and just select privileges. You can also select other and then you can put in the other impact in this form here. So there's a few options that you can do having to do with affected endpoints. I like to put attack vectors and give as much detail as possible, but both should really do the exact same thing from what I've seen. I haven't had any problem putting something into the affected components and not in the attack vectors and vice versa. So it's really up to you what you wanna do. But for the most part, I do use the attack vector section and I just put as much detail as possible about how to go exploiting the vulnerability without giving too much information because that's your write up. So just give a basic description, but also be as detailed as possible so people who quickly glance over it can understand what they have to do. Something that's kind of cool with MITRE is they also have this PDF where you can go through and you can see how to properly write a CVE. So they have a generic template, they have the details to use of how to go about phrasing specific things, what a product should look like on a CVE, and so much more that you can go about reading. So I'll put this down in the description below, but you can also find this PDF right here inside of this little eye icon and then selecting the PDF here. From there, you're gonna put a little bit more detail into this specific description and this will also most likely show on the NIST database. You'll put your credit, which no one really sees at all, and then the references, so what GitHub link you're going to do. In this case, it'll be Craft CMS, right? So you could just copy this on over, and then you could paste it into MITRE. Any additional information that you want to share with them, so like, let's say developers decided to say, hey, we're going to give you about 30 days, right? And then you'll be able to publish the CVE. You can tell MITRE this, so that way they're aware that the CVE is gonna be on hold or reserved for 30 days or more. So put that information in and give as much information to MITRE as possible so they're aware of the situation. Once you have that, fill out the CAPTCHA, submit the request, and there's going to be another page that tells you, hey, you're gonna be receiving an email within 24 to 72 hours. Most of the time, it's about 48 hours to get the actual identifier. Sometimes it's longer. I've had a few identifiers that took about two weeks 
to get. So depending on the amount of people trying to submit CVEs, that'll determine how long it'll take for the CVE ID to get to your email. People or the developers are good to go and they want you to release or publish the CVE. Here's how to go about doing it. First things first is heading over to GitHub and setting up your own GitHub. Again, you can use mine as a reference. I have no problem with you taking this and using it as your own. And all you have to do is clone it, copy it, and then obviously remove any of my CVEs because you don't have those CVEs, you have your own CVEs now. And you're going to want to put a few things into your report. The first things first is again, you're going to want to put the description, put as much information as possible. From there, you're going to also going to want your severity score as well as the published CVE from MITRE or from NIST, it really doesn't matter, as well as the software link of where the vulnerability is present. Additionally, you can have your proof of concept where you walk through step by step how to go about exploiting this vulnerability, and then you can publish it onto GitHub. Once you do that, there's another CVE form that you have to go to. So you're going to click on select requested type and you're going to click on notify CV about publication. And this is going to do almost the exact same thing as the last form. It's just going to send MITRE a notification about the status and update the CVE based on what you tell it. So from here, you're just going to put your advisory link. So this is going to be your GitHub. You're going to also put the CV IDs that are within your advisory or publication. So on your GitHub, if you put three CVs, you're going to put those CVs with a comma delimiter. And then you're also going to put any additional information that you need to put for each CVE ID. Most of the time, you could just leave this blank. You're not going to really use it. And then if you want to put data publication, you can. Also, not really necessary because they're going to give you a publication date anyway. From there, you submit it. It takes 24 hours and you have a published CVE. Something that I do want to mention as well is there's something called the CVE numbering authorities or CNAs. And essentially what that is, is vendors get specific permission by MITRE to assign CVE IDs. And there is 470 CNAs. So if a company, let's say that you're on, does require you to submit through them, you're going to have to submit through them and not through MITRE. And they'll do all the work with MITRE to get your CVE. So make sure before you submit the CVE to MITRE that you do research on the CNA to ensure that there's no one out there that has a vulnerability within their specific software. So just be wary of that. I've never had this happen to me. But for instance, if you do have, let's say, an Adobe vulnerability, you're going to have to go through Adobe because they're a CNA and they have specific permission from MITRE to submit CVE IDs. So you'll have to go through them and you'll have to talk to them about how to go about submitting those kind of CVEs. If there is no CNAs, then you can use the form that I showed previously and submit your CVEs there. Something that I wanted to show you guys as well was Jake and I, we identified a vulnerability on Relativity Server 22 and it was an SQL injection vulnerability where in the name parameter, you had a JSON post request. And from there, we were able to use a case when statement to exploit this SQL injection and obtain database information and extract a bunch of information from the database, which is super cool. And it's a proprietary software, but we did get specific permission from the company to go about doing this. So before you start testing any sort of vulnerabilities on any web applications, so make sure before you start testing a proprietary software, you have explicit permission from the maintainer that you're allowed to do that. But other than that, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below. We also have a blog post having to do with CV hunting on the MRE security blog. So that'll also be down in the description below. So please like subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.